happy Father's Day. Blessings to all the men in our lives. We are so grateful for you and so grateful for everyone that has joined us for worship this day. Your heart is about to be mightily blessed as the men of First Church lead us in this worship experience. We're also blessed because we have a wonderful guest pastor. His name is Reverend Walter C. Barton Jr. And he's actually retired and a dear friend and has come out of retirement just for this special moment. So I know you will be blessed this day. So as we enter into this time of worship, I invite you now to just open yourself to the spirit of God. As the musical prelude by Brother Joseph Gordon is played, followed by our opening hymn led by our men's chorus. Welcome to worship this day. Amen. Bottom of my heart 
Jonathan Maxwell, treasurer of the United Methodist Men, and it is our uh, honor to uh, uh, do today's uh, call to worship. We lift up our souls to you, holy God, our Father. Lord, 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 Lord. Teach us, Lord, fathers, and all gathered here that we may know your ways. Guide our every move, Holy, Holy, God, Holy God, that we may walk in your paths of love and mercy. Let us worship the God, our Father, who leads us in what is right. Together, let us worship God. Amen. Amen. Now, we'll have the invocation by Parker Keith Webster. to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are, who we are, and who we will be with you and through you. May your spirit dwell with us, guide us, and keep us mindful that you are the Lord above all. Guide us to your truth. Keep us mindful of one another. And in this day, Lord, we know there may be trouble. But we know we can hold your unchanging hand to guide us through all things. And by the love of Jesus, may your spirit blend and guide us. Keep us mindful that there is a way and you make ways out of no way. This and all things we pray in your name, dear Christ. Amen. Here yeah, now, this litany for Father's Day as presented by Brother Keith and myself. For our fathers who have given us life and love that we may show them respect and love. We pray to the Lord. For fathers who have lost a child through death that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us. We pray to the Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your wisdom and in your love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers and role models. Let the example 
of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, wives and mothers, sisters and family in Christ, honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Who taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church family, happy Father's Day to the men in our lives. Before I give the announcements that you see before you, there's two I would like to lift up. One is that if you are part of the lay servant ministry, your meeting is now on Wednesday at 6 p.m. So we will send you an email. Also want to let you know another announcement, the reopening team, we will gather this Tuesday at 7.30. And evangelism, I pray you remember, you're Thursday at 6.30. So for all those new announcements, I'll repeat them in the email this week. But I will continue for that which is before us this day. And so, as you know, next Sunday, we are celebrating all of our wonderful graduates. So we're so excited. And so our service will be led by our young people. So you gotta make sure you're here with us so that you can have a good time. Also, this week happening is our BB Joy, which gathers every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. It's for those just older youth. Make sure you continue to gather. That evening, we continue with our prayer at 7 p.m. And so for those that need prayer, feel free to call us at 712-451-0200. Enter the code 614-420, and you'll be gathered with those that are joining God in prayer. As I mentioned, the lay servants meeting is not on Tuesday, but it will be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Because at 7.30 on Tuesday night, the reopening team will gather. In the morning, Wednesday morning, you can always join those sweet souls that gather early in the morning to talk to the Lord. And so if you need prayer or want to join us, call 605 313-4820, enter the passcode 147284, and you'll be with those that are gathering. Also in the evening at 7.30, we have our prayer and Bible study, which has been a phenomenal time. We have two more sessions because we will pause for the end of June, but you can join us for this great time. And before that, at six o'clock, we have our lay servants meeting. Also, this Coming up real soon on the 26th. How many of you love fish? I do. So there's Snapper and Whiting and the finance team is doing a fundraiser. So please feel free to call or email Sister Susan and you can join in in this wonderful yummy time. Amen. Also the United Methodist Women, they are planning in advance. And so on July 10th, they have their mission picnic. All are welcome to come. Just RSVP to the mission United Methodist Women email. And later on in the month of July, on the 24th and the 31st, we will be having Mission U, which is hosted by the United Methodist Women of our denomination. And so it's a wonderful time of learning about mission and those 14 ages and up, men and women are welcome to join us. As you know, we continue, it's amazing how when you do something out of your heart and you give to those that are in need, God blesses. And so we continue to be a blessing to the ministry and the community with our food pantry. As you see, June 22nd is our next distribution day. And if you want to contribute canned goods, cereals, staples, or finances, all you need to do is connect, contact Brother Kenneth Gum. He was the nice guy playing the Congos this morning. 
and Brother Vincent Cummins, who was to my right, who led us in our litany to the fathers. Lastly, Triba Asher, happy, happy birthday. I heard you guys had a slamming party last week. I'm so sorry I missed it. But happy birthday today to Sister Pardello. Blessings to you as you walk on those amazing new knees. And happy birthday to Janine Griffith, Jean Matter, Jennifer Edwards, Marlene Whittingham, Ian Henry, Larry Bith, Avery Owens, Cicely Mitchell Harper, Eileen Smith. Blessings to all of you. May this year be a new one that you've never seen before filled with God's richest blessings. And so with that, we say thank God for all these wonderful things that are happening in our church. I invite you now to turn your heart, as many of you may know, it's Juneteenth. And so one of the men, our United Methodist Men's President, is going to lead us in our Juneteenth celebration, followed by our appeal for Brother Marvin. Thank you, Pastor. Harambe is Swahili, a term which means we all pull together. In other words, unity. Yesterday, we celebrated our unity and freedom in what is known as Juneteenth, which marks the day when the federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas uh, in 1865 to take control uh, of the state and ensure that all enslaved people be freed. On that day, roughly 250,000 enslaved people in Galveston received the long awaited news of their freedom. And since then, Juneteenth has marked a symbolic end to slavery in the US. The troops arrival unfortunately came a full two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Some actually believed that the reason for the mysteriously lengthy delivery of information was so that their country could receive extended free labor. Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. It honors and recognizes the African American struggle for freedom. And on June 17th of this year, under our president, Joe Biden, Juneteenth officially became recognized as a federal holiday. President Biden stated that Juneteenth marks both the long hard night of slavery and subjugation and a promise for a brighter morning to come. Juneteenth is a time for reflection and rejoicing, education and striving for self-improvement. Let us honor the struggle of our ancestors by continuously supporting the concepts of family, community, economic empowerment, and a tireless pursuit for equality. So I wish you all a blessed Juneteenth. Thank you, God bless you, Harambe. We will now have appeals and blessings of the offering by Brother Marvin Chandler. Good morning, First Church. Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Amen. I bear witness to that scripture. Uh, this is the appeal for tithes and offering. There are three ways. Hello, um, church. My name is Olivia. I will be saying the poem with my hand, Daddy. There, be, there are three ways to, 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 to give. 
You can mail or drop off checks at the church, the First United Methodist Church at 227 East Lincoln Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York, 10552. The phone number is 914-668-3334. Or you can go to fumcmvny.org and you can locate the online giving button and give. This is secured by Vanco. Or you can give anytime or anywhere with the, our Give Plus mobile app that you can download for free from the App Store or Google Play. You can find our church zip code, 10552, or search for the church name, First United Methodist Church, and donate. Given on the app, it's easy, it's convenient, and it only takes a minute to set up an account or give it to guest. Now we have the blessing of the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gifts that you've blessed us with, through your abundance of blessing. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless our minds to use your gifts in a wise way. We pray that you bless our hands to spread the way you would have us spread, to do the work that you would have us to do with it. And we pray that you bless and touch our hearts to share in the building of your kingdom on earth. We pray, Heavenly Father, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now, uh, please welcome young brother Zachary Simpson, who will be bringing us a tribute to fathers. And he is a young man that we love and are very proud of. Amen. I will be seeing the poem, Hold My Hand, Daddy. Hold my hand, Daddy, and show me the way so that I can go out in the big world one day. Teach me the basics and then let me learn. Ah, should I even ever get stuck? I'll know just where to turn. Cheer me up, Daddy. And when I am feeling blue, I can always rely on a kind word from you. Draw my tears up, Daddy, when I am feeling sad. Let me know it's okay, and I won't feel so bad. So show me the sunshine, and then let set me free to be a brilliant brilliant person that you raised me to be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Miss Olivia, a beautiful job. Gentlemen, if you're not crying yet, I don't know, but it is your day. So if you are a man of God and we know you are, will you stretch your hands as I pray this blessing? And women, if you are near men, stretch your hand or touch their shoulder so they can be seen. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you have created us and called us your own. Bless the Father and men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers and men. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. In moments of joy, rejoice with them. In times of struggle, give them the courage and perseverance. Grant that we, their sons, daughters, may honor and appreciate them always with a spirit of profound respect. May the example and the prayer of Saint Joseph inspire them to live their vocation with courage. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord and the people of God said, amen, amen. I now invite you to receive the bio by Brother Grant Akiti, who will introduce our preacher for the day, Reverend Walter C. Barton. Let's bless God for the preacher. Good morning, church. 
I feel doubly blessed to be here this morning. First to be back in this space after a long time and to be asked to introduce our guest speaker. To God be the glory. Amen. The Reverend Walter C. Barton Jr. is a native of the North Shore of Boston, Massachusetts. He was ordained a deacon in 1973 and an elder in the former Western New York Annual Conference. He was the first African-American to be ordained an elder in that conference. He served 21 years on numerous boards and agencies until transferring to the New York Annual Conference in 1995. His pastoral record include appointments to Grace United Methodist Church, St. Albans, Queens, New York, St. Mark's United Methodist Church, Harlem, Newman Memorial United Methodist Church in Brooklyn, and Golden Hill United Methodist Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Serving both the church and community for over 40 years, he was a member of the board of the ordained ministry conference relations committee and chairperson of the commission on religion and race in Western New York annual conference. His New York annual conference service includes board member of the New York society, black college tour, VIM team member to Ghana, West Africa in 2010, 2012, and 2014. A Mission U United Methodist Women study and plenary leader in 2013 and 2019. It's also a board member of the Harlem Congregation for Community Improvements, board member of the Organization for a New Equality, Boston, Massachusetts, and board member of the Council of Churches, Bridgeport, Connecticut, just to name a few. The Reverend Barton holds a lifetime membership in Black Methodists for Church Renewal, BMCR. He retired from active ministry in 2015 and has since been pursuing a love of travel, traveling all over the United States, from New York to California, Colorado, Florida, Massachusetts, Louisiana, and Georgia. Often you will hear him say, since I cannot add more time to my life, I'm adding more life to my time. His favorite introduction is simply this. I've been truly blessed. If anyone should ask you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. It is my privilege to welcome this child of God to this service today. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, no. 
Good morning, church family. I bring you greetings today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessings on all families represented here, especially on this Father's Day. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Father, teach us to do your will, for you are our God. May your Holy Spirit lead us. We see your faithfulness and goodness in what you have done for us throughout our life. We think about these things and we thirst for you. Let us hear of your unfailing love every time we hear your word. For we are trusting you. Show us where to walk for we give ourselves to you. Keep us on firm footing for the glory of your name. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from Psalm 25, and this is from the New Revised Standard Version. And this is a prayer for guidance and for deliverance of David. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions, According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity and their children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God out of all its troubles. Our New Testament lesson is from Romans chapter eight, verses five through 17. Again, from the New Revised Standard Version. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds 
on the things of the spirit. To see the mind on the flesh is death. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you who are in the flesh, you who are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
First of all, I'd like to say thank you to your pastor for her hospitality. I want to thank the men's choir for making me almost want to come out of retirement. <laughs> and I um, want to say a special thank you to uh, Sister Olivia who did the tribute this morning, Olivia. Now stand up so everybody can see you. Stand up, St just stand up. Come on, Olivia, because I've, I've got a story I need to share with you. You know, a real, real quick story about another Olivia who I know who's about the same age as you are. One Sunday, I just shared this with your pastor this morning, one, one Sunday, I got very emotional in church. And as I was sitting in the pulpit area, um, tears started running down my face. And this was during the, um, not only sharing of concerns, but it was a ritual of friendship. And so, you know, the tears were streaming down. And suddenly I looked down into the congregation and my Olivia, um, started walking down the aisle towards me, sitting in the chancel. And she came around the chancel and, and walked right up the stairs. And she walked right up to me and she said, are you okay? And then she said to me, why are you crying? Now, my response was, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy this morning and joyful and feeling some sorrow. So Olivia, you know what she did? She reached into her little pocketbook and said to me, do you need a Skittle? <laughs> and she went into her pocketbook and she gave me a Skittle, just one, but she gave me a Skittle and she gave me a hug, and then she went back down the stairs from the chancel and went back to her seat. And as I sat there, when it was time for me to get up, I spoke to the congregation and I said the following. 
Here I am, your pastor, and I've been your pastor for I don't know how many years, and here I am sitting here crying, and nobody came up here to see who I was except for Olivia. I learned something that day. You never know who God's going to use. You never know who God is going to use. Well, it's a privilege to be here at First Church this morning. I will confess that since retirement, I have been on the road, and I intend to stay on the road until the Lord calls me on that final road. Will you pray with me? God of our Father, we give you thanks and praise for fathers young and old. We pray for young fathers newly embracing their vocation. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family, faith, and joy and sacrifice. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. And may they know that God is a God of compassion and walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. We remember fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers who are no longer with us, but who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. Amen. After a leave of absence from active ministry in 1986 and a divorce in 1987, I came back into ministry in 1988 to a full-time appointment. And one of the things that did not happen when I was married was we had no children. And I had always wanted to be a father, a dad. Well, I was appointed to this church that had a nursery school. And one day the phone rang in the parsonage and one of the teachers said, Pastor, I wonder if you could come and do the story hour this morning, a little early. You see, I was in a cross-racial appointment, black pastor to a white church. And in this church, there was this nursing school. So the head teacher wanted me to come because there was a new child coming to the class. And this new child just happened to be black and she did not want him to feel uncomfortable. So I said, of course, I'll come and I'll do the story hour. So I, I went you know, very curious about this new child that was coming. As soon as I walked into the nursery, our two eyes met. And that was the beginning of a story and a blessing. Fast forward. I ended up adopting that child as a single parent. When the social worker brought him to me for the very first time, he walked into church, took one look at me, and said the following, I know him. He works for God. You see, God works in mysterious ways, or in his case, I said, be careful what you pray for. You just might get it. Well, he was three years old now. He was three years old then. He's going to be 34 years old in September. And last Father's Day, he sent me this message. Dad, words really can't express what you mean to me. Growing older and experiencing what life could have been like if you didn't see something in me. I'm extremely grateful. I wish I realized that earlier in life. 
You have been nothing but good to me, always pointing me in the right directions. And even when I chose the wrong path, you still never turned your back on me. You're a very strong man and I don't deserve you. I really hope someday I can be more of a reflection of you, your love. Happy Daddy Day, your son, Daryl Justin Barton. Not only do you know, not know when God is going to touch you, sometimes you don't know where the blessing is going to come from. So be ready to receive it. Well, the sermon title this, this morning is, When You Are Going Through Hell, My Brothers, Keep Going. And it's based on not just the psalm that you chose as your primary psalm, but basically based on readings from the book of Psalms. Because in the book of Psalms, which it just happens to be one of my favorite books in the Bible, you will find all kinds of Psalms that speak directly to your life and your present situation. Now, this isn't an original title. The first person who said it was Winston Churchill. But Churchill said it this way, and made it even simpler. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. We live in a world right now where we have all experienced things that we never thought we would experience before. And as far as fatherhood and manhood are concerned, it's not easy. It is not easy at all. And I can testify. And the reason I can testify is I was in my 40s before I became a father, when I should have been a grandfather. It is not easy to guide and lead your children. It is not easy at all. But the psalmist this morning, as well as the other fathers in the Old Testament. And I would, I would commend this to your reading. There must be something in all of this. Because if you look at fathers in the Old Testament, none of them had a really easy time. Not one single one. From Abraham to Isaac to Eli to Samuel to even Saul, and David, none of them had an easy time. And unfortunately, all of them had issues with their children. Some of them didn't have children turn out the way that they wanted them to be. Hello, somebody. Some of them turned out to have children that rebelled against them. Some of them had children that made them question God. Some of them had children that made them sad. So think about it. When you look through biblical history, it has not been easy to deal with both fatherhood and to deal with manhood. Now, I say this all the time. Not everybody can be a father because just because you help bring children into the world, it does not make you a father and definitely does not make you daddy. What makes you those two things is responsibility to your children. And your children aren't yours. They're the Lord's. You are simply called to nurture them, to help them grow, and to be strong enough to let them go and help them to stand on their own two feet. The comedian Sinbad often used to talk about his own father, and he talked about him as being the disciplinarian in the house. And I even found myself saying this one time, oh, Lord Jesus, don't let me kill this child. But we have survived, and we have survived with grace. Now to the Psalms. 
Psalm 23 is a psalm of trust. And there are many psalms in the book of psalms that deal with trust. Your choice, which comes from Psalm 37, is actually a psalm of lament. Oh, Lord, basically help me, restore me, lead me, guide me, do not desert me. And then I like to wrap it up with all of the Psalms in Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hill. From whence does my help come? It comes from who? The Lord. And I especially like that part about the sun and the moon, that God is forever with us, but we must also be with the Lord. Psalm 23 reminds us about how important it is to, to trust in the Lord. And many of us learned that psalm when we were in Sunday school. And what did it say? The Lord is my what? My shepherd, which means the Lord leads. The Lord leads. And one of the things in that particular psalm that I love the best he made me to lie down in green pastures, to take a rest. And that also says to me, brothers, learn how to take care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, how can you take care of anybody else? His rod and his staff, what do they do? They, they, they comfort me. Wait upon the Lord and you will find your comfort. It may not come when you want it, but it is going to always be on time. And as we look further in the psalm, what does he say? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Can you imagine how powerful that is? that God is not going to desert you, not in this life or in the life to come. And probably the one I love the best as a pastor is, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And the reason why I like that one so much because when God blesses you, that blessing is yours. You don't have to worry about anybody else. It's got your name on it. And I often say this, make sure you're in a place where the blessings are coming down. And if you're not in the place where the blessings are coming down, take a look and see where the blessings are coming down, then get up and walk over to whatever that place is so that you can receive a blessing from the Lord that has your name on it. Fatherhood is not easy. And I would speak to you, it never has been because there were so many issues around it. And given Western society in particular and our understanding about manhood and what it is to be, no wonder our lifespan is as long as the women in our lives. I've been reminiscing all through this and thinking about the fathers that I have known growing up. And I started naming them Mr. Littles, Mr. Tyler, Mr. Barson, and the list goes on and on. And these were certain men that I looked to for examples about how to be a father and a good man. But they're gone now. They're no longer here. They've been called home. I said called home to the church triumphant, I hope. But called home. They are no longer here. And say, I'm a child that grew up during the 50s. I'm a child that grew up with father knew best. Leave it to Beaver. 
And I could go on and on and on of what I experienced as a child, but in reality, I found out it wasn't like that at all. So today, we have to realize that what is still consistent in our understanding is this. God is still with us. God is still for us. And when we are going through hell, keep going, don't stop. Keep going, do not stop. Because guess what? God is going with you to make sure that you get through. All you have to do is call on his name and the answer will come. I'm still here. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. And don't you dare stop until you get through, until you have your breakthrough. And there are some things you know you cannot control at all. And you have absolutely no control over. But guess who has the final control and the final say over everything? I can tell you in a career of more than 40 years, when I think I've seen it all, somebody surprises me. Because we live in an ever-changing world. And then every now and then, somebody like Sister Olivia, when I'm down and out, comes and offers me a Skittle to check up and see how I am. Every now and then, the Lord sends an angel to help carry me through. Every now and then, I get an affirmation of who I have been in this journey, and I receive a blessing. And I'm still open, because any way the Lord chooses to bless me is just fine with me. And I might be generous and share the blessing with you, but then I may not be because that blessing has its name, and that name is my name. And once again, folks, once again, my brothers, be careful what you pray for. Be very careful because you just might get something that you were not expecting. And another thing, the psalmist this morning reminds us that those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. There is something very significant about holding on and holding fast to trusting in God. And I will trust in the Lord until I die. And when I think about that, I think about the heritage that is part of who I am and where I have come from. And my brothers, as long as you are alive, you are still on a journey. You are still on your journey. And be ready to make sure you're not carrying too much baggage while you're on that journey. You know, lighten your own load. Move forward. Keep moving. Or as my former secretary in my first church when I was 27 years old, First City Church, she once said to me, Pastor, bless them and keep stepping. And she said, just don't bless them out. And that's been one of the things I followed all through my career. Bless them and keep stepping. And it applies to the laity as well as to the clergy. Bless them and keep stepping and let the Lord take care of the rest because there is another word in the language that a lot of us don't like to use. It's called karma. And believe me, what goes round comes round. 
You do not do anything that is mean, nasty, undercurrent, or whatever to anybody else and not expect it to come back to you. Because I am a primary witness that it does come back. It does come back. And also, my brothers, one of my prayers is this. Lord, have your hand on me right over my mouth. Be careful of how you speak. Think about what you say. Because once you let it out there, you cannot take it back. And know that if you ask the Lord for guidance and to temper your own individual spirit, and this goes for everybody, you know, not just my brothers, but my sisters too. Be careful. And also realize, my brothers, in particular, your children are watching you. Your children are watching you. They're watching how you act. They're watching how you treat their mothers. They are watching how you interact with other people. They are watching you and they learn by example. So be careful, be very mindful, because if you are not, you will one day live to regret it about what you have not done or what you did too much of. Not only are they watching, but the Lord's watching too. Knowing our every move, our every thought, and our every action, watching us to see if we are following what he has prescribed for us, for us. Someone asked me, Pastor, what are you doing? And I say to him, every morning, every Monday morning I wake up, I'm happy. He said, what do you mean by that? I says, I'm happy every single Monday morning. And then I say tongue in cheek, well, it's because I didn't have to deal with some folk on Sunday. That's why I'm happy every single Monday morning. But I'm going to tell you right now, I wake up every morning happy. So one more opportunity to be in his service one more time. One more opportunity, yeah. You know, I, I, can no, I no longer rise and shine like I used to. I can only handle one at a time. I can only handle one at a time. You know, I can rise, but it takes me a little while now to, to start shining. You know, it takes me a little, little, little while now to negotiate the stairs. You know, some of you, although you look like, it looks like a very young congregation, yes, but some of you know what I'm talking about. You know, neg ne negotiating certain things, you know. And something's new in the body, almost like it seems every other day. You know, where, where did that come from? What was that that I just heard crack? You know, and, and listen, that's the gift of life. That's the gift of life. When I turned 70 and the Lord gave me three score and 10, like I had prayed for, I started jumping up and down. Fortunately, I didn't hurt nothing. But, you know, I started jumping up and down because the Lord had given me what I had asked for. Three score and ten, he let me make it to 70. You know, my dad died at 58. My grandfather died at 50, 45. You know, I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. I was doing a holy dance all through my home. You know, you let me make it. You let me make it. So somebody said to me, well, Pastor, now that you've made it, uh, you know, what did you ask the Lord for? I said, I'm not asking him for anything right now because he, he, he granted me my prayer. So I'm subject to check out any moment now. He gave me what I asked for. He allowed me to see my son grow into manhood. He allowed me to see my mom live a long life. 
he allowed me to have a granddaughter. You know, those are the things that have been important and significant in my life. Because I have attempted to be faithful and the Lord has showered me with so many blessings that I cannot complain. And so when the men's choir hit, lead me, guide me along the way, you know, you, you brought me back to my grandmother's church, Zion Baptist Church in Lynn, Massachusetts, where they would sing that on a Sunday morning. And so I am so thankful for so many things. And if you think that God is not blessing you, tomorrow morning when you get up, just take a look in the mirror and say these three words, I'm still here. So order my steps for this day, O Lord, and keep me on the right and righteous way. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like angel, eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord. And because my help comes from the Lord, I will fear no evil, even though I should walk through the valley of the shadow of death, because I know you are with me, and I know that the Lord will keep me from evil. He will keep my life the Lord will keep your going out, your coming in from this time and forevermore. And all you have to do is believe it. Believe it. Believe it. And it's not a hard thing to do. In Ghana, they have the following saying, God is good, and I am a witness. God is good. Not all the time. They don't say all the time. They say, God is good, and I am a witness. I am a witness. And I used to say and still say, I have always been a believer because that was what I was brought up to believe. But now I know. Now I know for myself. Not what my mama taught me, not what my grandmother taught me, not what I heard in church on Sunday mornings. Yes, I believe. But now I know. I know for myself. And since I know, nobody can take that away from me. Nobody can take that from me. And so on this Father's Day, all I have to say to you is happy Father's Day. Hopefully, you are not going through too many storms in your lives. But when you get into stormy weather, just remember this. When you are going through hell, Keep going. Amen.
that holds our head. So will you pray with me? God, our Father, our Creator, the lover of our souls, to you, oh God, we come. We bless you and thank you because every good and perfect gift comes from you and you have blessed us with our life. You blessed us with your spirit. You blessed us and you showed us how to live this life. And you've extended yourself through your son, Jesus Christ, who saved us. And then you gave us the sweet spirit to lead and guide us. So Lord, we know right now as your children that if you do not hold our hand, if you do not lead and guide us, we will be lost. We confess that without you in our life, we don't know who we are. So God, we come once again saying, Lord, have your way in our lives. Lord, take over our spirit, our mind, our body, so that you can lead us and guide us, so that we can be all that we've been created to be. We need you, oh God, to order our steps. Lord, we thank you this day. We thank you not only for life, health, strength, and blessings, oh God, we thank you for the men of our lives. Every single one of them, God, we thank you that they are the example of all that you've called them to be. We thank you because they have chosen to be a man of God. And Lord, we are mindful that not all men have been the best, just like none of us. We have all fallen short of the grace of God, and yet you still anoint us, you still appoint us. And so, God, in thanksgiving for the men of our lives, those that have given us life or those that have given their life to us in whatever form, we just ask right now that you bless them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. We pray, oh God, that for every man of God that chooses you in their heart and their spirit, that you will touch their mind with your thoughts, oh God, and renew them, oh God. We pray that you'll touch their ears, oh God, that above all the voices in this world, that they will hear your voice clearly, oh God, and that you will anoint their lips so they can speak truth in life and give life. Lord, touch their hearts. If their hearts are broken, oh God, thou is a healer. We ask that you mend and restore them and you fill them with the love, that sacrificial agape love, oh God. And use their hands, oh God, so that as they touch others, that they will heal and serve, oh God. And definitely, Lord, order their steps so every direction they go, they go in your path that's designed to give life. And Lord, we ask, especially for our black men and any man, that you put a hedge of protection around them. Because this world is not always kind, oh Lord, but by your grace and by your mercy, surround them, oh Lord. So they can grow into all they need to be, and when they get old with gray on their head, or if they become a bald headed Lord, that the wisdom in their mind and their spirit, they can pour out to other generations, and that they will bless and leave a legacy of love and grace, and let them know what a good man is. And so, Lord, we thank you for the men of our lives, and we thank you for the men that led us in worship this day. Oh God, give them a double portion and blessing upon their lives. And for all of us, oh God, who need you to lead and guide us, we ask that you will do just that. For those that are broken, oh Lord, we ask for your healing mercies. For those, oh Lord, who don't know your name and don't know the sweetness of calling Jesus, let them learn who you are. For those who are hungry, oh God, feed them. If it's our hands, oh God, teach us how to give and feed and help your world. And Lord, as we grow in grace and mercy, may we remember that you are the source of all our lives and you are the one that allows us to live and breathe and have our being. And so, Lord, this day and every day that we all have a chance to live, may we tell the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May we declare how awesome you have been and how kind you've been or how you've wiped a tear, how you've strengthened our heart. Whatever you've done, Lord, let it be a testimony to your goodness. And when we can't speak no more, Lord, let our living not be in vain and let it be a testimony. So, Lord, we thank you this day. We thank you for everybody, but we especially thank you for the men. Continue to lead and guide them. Order their steps so they can give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
this day. As we all prepare to go into the world, will you receive this blessing? May the Lord, our God, our Father, creator, who blesses us abundantly, may those blessings fall upon you and may you have a spirit of thanksgiving. And, and out of that thanksgiving, may you go into the world to share the blessing and teach them who Jesus is. And may the fruit of that blessing be that someone will come to fall in love with Jesus to lead and guide them every step of the way so God's kingdom will fall on earth. May God bless you as you go. May God bless you as you come. May God bless you as you sing and rejoice. May the Lord bless your going and coming both now and forevermore as you give the Lord all honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Amen. Go in Jesus' name. I have something for you. You are always worrying about. That sounds good. Are you boiling? Yeah. What are you boiling? Oh. 